I've always believed that when you help a, a woman, you don't just affect a single woman. You contribute to a strong family. You um, contribute also to the encouragement that's given to a friend or a sister. You inspire an audience full of young women. You show a world of women that thought they couldn't, that they can. So we're naturally nurturers, givers, doers. And when you pick up a woman, you elevate her, you lift her up, she naturally reaches down to grab those who are um, still down and below. So when she wins, we all win. Dr. Bruce Perry once said that it's not the traumas that define our life, it's the, it's the history of our connections. And when I think of supports, I think to me, that's what supports are. They're the connections that we all make with our community and the connections we make with each other that, that lift us up in the long run and um, provide us with the ongoing um, kindness and, and love and caring that we all need. I think celebrating each other is important. I also came from an era when women were uh, afraid. If another woman was successful, that meant we couldn't be, and I personally didn't buy that, but I think there was a lot of competition between women, and I think there's enough for all of us, really. And to celebrate women um, coming together, making our community a better place, I think it's, it's so important to celebrate that, and, and it helps to build the next generation of uh, volunteers and supporters in our community. Like most of us, um, my path did not go the way I thought my path was going to go. You, you come up, you're a young woman, you, you imagine that your life is going to be a certain way and invariably it doesn't turn out the way that you think it would. And through those years, what I found was that I could rely on the kindness of others and the generosity of others and the support of others to be sure that I could achieve my dreams and that I could be the best person I could be for my community, for my family, and for my colleagues. So supports of the kind that the YWCA offers are invaluable for women as they're finding their path. They often go unnoticed and it's important to bring them to the forefront so that we can all bring our stories forward. We've overcome a lot of struggles and the struggles are no one individual person's problem. They're ours collectively to tell the stories. We see you. We see you and you matter and keep going. You might need to rest, you might need to step back from your journey for a moment, but we see you, we're here for you, and keep going. Recognize that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We've all suffered and, and experienced pain and, and the difficulties in our lives, some of us more than others. But the reality is, that we all have an opportunity to move forward out of that darkness and into, into the light and to enjoy the, the, the beauty of, of being a strong woman. I've been fortunate to have so many women before me pave the way. I think it's important to recognize women's accomplishments because throughout the course of history that hasn't always been done and women haven't had a spotlight put upon them in the way that they deserve. And so when we can put thought and intention behind celebrating all of the great work that women do, um, it's, it's important. And um, I think a lot of times women are kind of expected to do it all and then when they do, they don't receive the recognition that they deserve. They have given me 
a start in my job. They've given me support through my personal life and my professional life. When I think back to the chances I've been given in my career, I have women to thank for every one of them. Women have opened the door for me every time. And once they opened the door, they showed me around, they sat with me at lunch, they set me up for success, they helped me when I failed. And looking back and even to this day, it's women who have been there for me every step of the way. At the end of the day, representation means a lot and it's easy to see that sometimes women can be thought a little bit less of, but at the end of the day, women nourish the mind, body, and spirit of all of those around them. And so to be able to recognize them is showing little girls and the youth that you can do exactly what you want to do and that you're going to be a powerful woman and you have the backing in the community to be there for you through it all. She should win, honestly. I'm not just being self-deprecating. She's so awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. She's so great. Hello, and welcome to the 2021 YWCA Saskatoon Virtual Women of Distinction Awards, presented by Nutrien. My name is Kara Barr, and I'm the CEO of the YWCA Saskatoon. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Peoples of this land and reaffirm our relationship with one another. I want to congratulate everyone who has been nominated tonight. Just being nominated means that you are making a positive and tangible difference in our community. I hope that you are all feeling delighted to sit alongside this accomplished group of women. On April 29th, our event committee hosted a virtual nominee gathering where my colleagues and I had the chance to meet and network with this year's incredible group of nominees. I left this evening feeling moved by their beautiful stories, inspired by their resilience in the face of life's obstacles, and empowered by how these women broke down barriers to make our community a safe, more equitable, equitable place for all. That, to me, is what the Women of Distinction Awards are about. These rewards of remind us of the true impact that can result from a group of strong, intelligent, imaginative women coming together and lifting each other up. I also want to thank everyone who took the time to nominate the women we are celebrating today. With your help, we can ensure that our nominees receive the recognition and admiration they deserve. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our volunteer committee and event sponsors. Without your continued support, we would not have the opportunity to host these awards, celebrate the remarkable women in our community, and fundraise for the many essential programs and services our organization provides. It has been a challenging year for the YWCA Saskatoon, and I want to extend a special thank you to our frontline workers, who, like so many of you watching tonight, have gone above and beyond this year to help our community. In closing, I hope tonight serves as a celebration for the hard work and dedication that has brought our nominees here and inspires others in our community who are looking to make a similar impact. Thank you and enjoy the show. Now I would like to introduce Candace Lang. Candace is the Vice President of Sustainability and Stakeholder Relations at Nutrien and is here to say a few words on behalf of our presenting sponsor. Thank you, Kara, for both the land acknowledgement and the warm introduction. Nutrien is just delighted to sponsor the Women of Distinction Awards this year. And I'm proud to work for a company that champions diversity and inclusion, um, not only in our organization, but in the community. And we're truly grateful for all the women we're recognizing tonight. The women being recognized have contributed in their own areas of expertise, in their own ways, but what they have in common is they really do inspire and, and help bring the full potential of women uh, into the spotlight. And the leadership and mentorship provided um, through these awards cannot be understated. And I know when I think about my own career, the leadership and mentorship provided by women around me has had a significant impact 
I think early on in my career, and a particular woman comes to mind, and I admired her from afar, and I aspired to be like her. She taught me that it is okay to love your family and love your career, and that we really need strong women leading our organizations and our communities. And most importantly, she taught me that we need to help each other and look out for each other, as certainly she did for me, um, in an unsolicited way, reaching out, helping me grow, and helping me develop. Nutrient's purpose is actually to grow our world from the ground up. And in this spirit, it is why we love to support this event, the YWCA of Saskatoon and the Women of Distinction Awards, shining the light on how you commit to growing our community and growing other women. Congratulations to all the nominees tonight. Thank you for everything you do and enjoy the evening. Being nominated for an award because of the contributions that I've made in the community shows me that people recognize what's being done and I really appreciate that recognition, um, but ultimately I'd hope that that would motivate others to get involved and do what they can to contribute back to the community. I think for me, some of the biggest supports um, would kind of be as a woman in sports. So playing football, um, that's a barrier for me that I face um, as opposed to other barriers to like food or housing. Um, and I've had huge supports through um, my my dad, my brothers, um, and the coaches on my football team, Football Saskatchewan as an organization. So um, I wouldn't be playing football without any of those people or organizations. The point of community is to always have somebody to be able to lean on and know that you're supported and cared about. And I think that that's exactly what the YWCA does. And without their support and what they do, it would be very hard for some people to, to move forward and keep doing what they do. And so for me, I think that different supports have really gotten me to where I am because I wouldn't be where I am without always having somebody to lean on and somebody that I know cares about me and is there. The nomination means a lot to me. It means a lot to be recognized. Um, and I'm just really grateful for the nomination. I think I'll take away hopefully meeting a bunch of other people who are interested in the same work um, and are just really interested in celebrating women and, and lifting them up. It's meant that all of the hard work that I put into the community um, is being rec recognized among other women who have done great things all around Saskatoon. Um, so it's a, a complete honor and it's very humbling to know that somebody thought of me for the nomination. Um, so moving forward, I think I'm just going to continue persevering and doing what I do um, and continue to be a strong Indigenous woman in every setting that I go into. It was the conversations that I had with multiple mentors, a large, large, a major portion of that being women, um, that showed me that I was capable of doing what I set out to do. Without those supports, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so I believe that what the Y does for women um, and what ultimately it, the strength that it contributes to a community as a whole um, is significant, it's important, it's required, and it will, um, it will impact the bigger picture at the end of the day. Hi, my name is Riley Daku, and I'm the Director of Operations with the YWCA Saskatoon. I'm very excited tonight to be able to present to you the Under 29 Award. Our nominees for the 29 and Under Award are Morgan Kelk. Morgan is a proud member of the Lac La Indian Band and has graciously been welcomed to many other communities throughout her lifetime. She prioritizes her time, voice, and heart to support, strengthen, and which, whichever community it is that welcomes her. After obtaining her Bachelor of Commerce from the University of Saskatchewan, she immediately and eagerly entered the field of fundraising as an associate with DNC DCG Philanthropic Services, where she remains today. Her focus is on leading and guiding organizations through their fund development priorities, ultimately working to strengthen Saskatoon, one nonprofit at a time. Kelsey Murphy. 
Kelsey is a thoughtful and compassionate community leader on diversity and inclusion issues. Through her role as the director, executive director with the Princess Shop, Kelsey is committed to supporting women, girls, and 2S LGBTQT plus students facing barriers in Saskatoon and across Saskatchewan. She also represents the Princess Shop on Reconciliation Saskatoon. Since 2017, Kelsey has been an active board member of Girls Who Rock Saskatoon, a local nonprofit dedicated to the empowerment of females, trans, two-spirit, and gender expensive youth and adults through collaborative music creation and performance. She is also a player and team captain on the Saskatoon Valkyries. Aubrianne Laliberte Piwa Beskinias. Aubrianne is a 22-year-old Cree woman from Canoe Lake Cree First Nation who was raised to amplify Indigenous voices. This is what Aubrianne has done as a post-secondary student both, with, both within and outside of her campus. As an advocate for Indigenous youth, she is proud to be the co-founder of the Indigenous Business Student Society at the Edwards School of Business and to hold various other student involvement leadership roles. She also speaks at events nationally as an Indigenous youth, which got her to her second term of being the National Student Director for Kando, and she currently works for Indigenous Clean Energy. The recipient of the 29 and Under Award is Kelsey Murphy. Congratulations, Kelsey. First off, I just want to say thank you to Kayla Bryan for nominating me. Um, your support means so much. Um, I also want to say thank you to my friends and family. I couldn't do any of this without you. Uh, and finally, I just want to um, share a quote. Um, it's from a show that I've never actually seen, but I heard it once and it really stuck with me. Um, and it's it says, you didn't make good choices, you had good choices. Um, and I think for myself throughout my life, I always had good choices available to me. Um, and this award means a lot um, because everybody here is working towards making everybody be able to have good choices. It came as a bit of a, a pleasant surprise and so just to know that um, people think that some of my achievements and my accomplishments deserve recognition, I, it means so much and I'm so grateful for this nomination. I grew up as a, as a curious girl. Um, I, I wanted to know how things worked and I was fortunate enough to be in a family that, that valued that curiosity, that, that really encouraged that. Um, and now I'm in, I'm in a role where asking questions are compliments. Um, the, the, the best compliment you could pay a scientist is, is to, to ask questions about their work and, and even, even critical questions, they're, they're all valued. Um, I think it's important to celebrate women in science, to encourage curious girls to, to embrace science, to stay curious. Uh, I think a lot of the women in my life that have supported me and that I look up to, they, uh, the values that they have really are in keeping with the wise values. And I, I just hope that I can be a strong role model and support and champion for other women and create a path for them as well. The best support that I've had through my career is the strong mentorship of, of women in science. Um, I'm, a, I'm a scientist. Um, I have been for about 30 years. When I look back 30 years ago, it was very difficult to find female mentors in science. Uh, only about 10% of the faculty at that time uh, were female um, in the sciences. And frankly, it hasn't really improved all that much. Um, so I think the support I got from the female mentors that I could find was, was really invaluable. I found that um, they, they treated me like I was a superstar in their lab. They had high expectations. Um, in, in other positions, I didn't feel like I was terribly valued or they thought I was the superstar. The female mentors I, I had made me feel that way and it, it allows you to, to sort of be persistent and you know tenacity is required in science um, and, it, and it allowed me to, to have that tenacity I needed to be successful. Going to university I definitely relied on a lot of people support emotionally, um, financially, 
And so to have services to help lift women up are so important. Um, and I'm really grateful that we have the why to support other women in the community as well. I think it really emphasizes that um, recognizing people who are working hard through the pandemic is really important um, to lift spirits. Hello, I'm Melissa Just, Interim Deputy Provost at the University of Saskatchewan, and I'm delighted to be here today. When presented with the opportunity to speak at today's event, I was reminded of all of the incredible women who are working every day to make Saskatoon a better place. Even though we're celebrating virtually this year, I have had the chance to learn more about each of the nominees, and it is a true honor to be part of such an exceptional group of women. I am particularly honored to present for the research and technology category. At the University of Saskatchewan, we believe that teaching, learning, and discovery are essential to our collective good. STEM jobs are building the world and the future, from infrastructure to space exploration, transportation, clean energy, and so much more. Careers in science and technology are solving the world's most significant challenges and making our daily lives that much richer. We also know that women are increasingly playing leading roles in research and technology as we search for solutions to complex issues. However, research and technology remain male-dominated fields. Women are less likely to choose a career in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or computer science. So we need to continue creating and fostering an ecosystem that nourishes the interest, talent, and intellectual capital of the girls and women in STEM, education, training, and careers. Sponsoring this award is one example of creating that ecosystem. We are celebrating and recognizing those who followed their passion, achieved their goals, and helped communities throughout the world thrive. It is my pleasure to introduce the 2021 YWCA Women of Distinction Award nominees in research and technology. Mackenzie Hunter. Mackenzie grew up in Radisson, Saskatchewan, and is proud to be part of a farming family. A graduate from the University of Saskatchewan's Edwards School of Business, Mackenzie now works as the Director of People and Culture at Seven Shifts, one of Saskatchewan's fastest growing tech companies and Canada's number one best workplace. Mackenzie has helped the team scale from 40 to 150 employees and enjoys acting as an integrator, bringing everyone in the company together to function as a whole. Mackenzie also co-founded Saskatoon's newest wedding and events venue, The Backyard. In her free time, Mackenzie gives back to the community through volunteer work, including being the volunteer coordinator for Motion Ball Marathon of Sport, a fundraiser for the Special Olympics Canada Foundation, and bringing her dog, Kitty, to therapy dog sessions through the St. John Ambulance Therapy Dog Program. Samia Sami. Samia is a senior undergraduate studying electrical engineering at the University of Saskatchewan. She is one of Canada's top 25 environmentalists under 25 and is the recipient of the Global Citizen Youth Award by the Saskatchewan Council for International Cooperation. Samia's area of undergraduate research include renewable microgrids and the observability of solar integrated distribution systems. She serves as chair of the USASC Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering Power and Energy Society and vice president of Engineers Without Borders USASC. Samia has improved the educational experience of students at USASC. She is named Canada's top Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Power and Engineering Society. Dr. Joyce Wilson. Dr. Wilson is a professor and scientist studying viruses and antiviral treatments and is a strong advocate for electronic data interchange at the University of Saskatchewan. Her research lab aims to use the knowledge to discover new ways to treat viral infections in humans. In addition to basic research, Dr. Wilson is also committed to the people at risk or affected by viral infections like HCV, HIV, and COVID-19. She is a member of the board of Prairie Harm Reduction, which allows her, her to contribute to improving the lives of those affected by HCV, HIV, and COVID-19 infections in Saskatoon. And the winner of this year's Research and Technology Award is Samia Sami.
It means the world to me. Uh, when I first opened my shop, it was sort of on my bucket list of things and it was uh, a goal that I really wanted to work towards. Uh, and the fact that my nominators have taken the time to put the energy and the effort into making my name, uh, or presenting my name for this award means so much, especially in a time like this. It has set off a, a week of nostalgia. I've, I've rifled through 60 years of scrapbooks to remember all the times that I have been involved with the YWCA over the years in business. And uh, it brought back my mother's words. I uh, left the house just barely 18 in Rosetown. And she said to me as I'm heading into the big city, which was quite small then, um, if you run into a tight spot or have any trouble, you just go right to the YWCA or the nearest church. We have to adapt a mindset. If we can't see it, then we can't always become it. So the more women that we put out there, we're showing the next generation that it is possible. And the more we highlight the success of women all around the world, we're gonna see a better you know, humanity of entrepreneurs and women all around the world. Well, I've been fortunate as a person in my life, but I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of women my staff, uh, my friends, I work with children, and uh, I think the YWCA is a trusted organization with a long history, and I consider them a resource. I know personally people who have been um, put on a better path, having stayed at the Y for a while. At the body shop, we were able to bring our staff in to work with residents here, and even if they weren't from an, a difficult situation, they would learn that there's always a place to go and uh, meet other women that maybe needed their support and their help. So it's, uh, it's inspirational no matter what your life has been like. Because it's a man's world, baby. As much as, uh, as, much as we are working towards equality and as much as barriers are being broken every day uh, I do still see everyday instances of the fact that we live in a patriarchal society for the most part and uh, I believe that the more that we celebrate women uh, and don't sort of be quiet or not haunt the limelight or anything like that the better we all are Support is one of the most incredible things and it's needed now more than ever. With our world changing and becoming so fragmented and digital, we need to have areas of support and places for people to go to. So it's so important for us to have these types of outlets so that when you're feeling a certain way or you need some support, it's there for you when you need it. My name is Karina Farbache and I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Affinity Credit Union. I'd like to begin by echoing the earlier statement by acknowledging that we're virtually gathered here on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis. It's amazing to think how many women entrepreneurs have stood on this very land beneath our feet. Let us all be thankful for this beautiful land and the ancestral stories rooted within it. Speaking of entrepreneurs, let's get ready to celebrate some amazing and accomplished women today. Like these women we're celebrating today, Affinity also strengthens our local economy by creating jobs and enabling members and communities to invest in one another. Our history was built on people looking out for one another, and our purpose at Affinity is to build a better world. Sponsoring events like the Women of Distinction Awards and supporting the YWCA are in perfect alignment with both our history and our purpose. The local community events and organizations that we at Affinity support, along with the help of our members, contribute to making our province better. And that builds a better world for all of us. It's good for you, it's great for your community, and it's good for us as a credit union. On that note, on behalf of Affinity, I'm honored to introduce the Entrepreneurship Award nominees. Acknowledge the women who've demonstrated the commitment, creativity, and determination it takes to launch and operate their own business. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to announce the 2021 Entrepreneurship Award nominees. 
Maureen Haddock. Maureen has been in business for 50 years and has put her teaching skills and her passion for writing to good use in the many businesses she and her husband have owned. During her 20 years as a franchisee with The Body Shop Canada, she worked with hundreds of women from all over the world, soaking up new ideas and skills, living the concept of profits with principles, and working diligently in local and global social campaigns. Maureen loves to encourage entrepreneurship as a path to good citizenship through initiatives like the Haddock Entrepreneurial Speaker Series, the Get a Bigger Wagon Young Entrepreneur Awards, scholarships, and mentorship. Alicia Soulier. Alicia is the founder and CEO of Salon Scale Technology, Inc. From award-winning stylist to entrepreneur, Alicia has dedicated over 16 years to the beauty industry. As the owner and creative director of Capelli Salon Studio for over 10 years, Alicia noted an inefficiency in her business that was directly affecting her bottom line, the color bar. Without the proper technology to account for the cost of hair color, many color sessions were walking out the door unpaid for. This discovery led to the creation of Salon Scale, an advanced hair salon back bar software that has since allowed Alicia to add the title of tech founder to her portfolio. Today, Alicia intends to use technology to disrupt the hair salon supply chain and ultimately create a healthier economic ecosystem in the hair industry. Nicola Tab. Nicola knows duds. She opened her vintage clothing shop, Better Off Duds, in 2012 and has since helped thousands of people find joy in clothing. Nicola was instrumental in starting the 33rd Street Business Improvement District, launched the 33rd Street Fair, and also created the annual YXE Vintage Crawl, which showcases Saskatoon's vintage and antique shops. She is passionate, inclusive, and always looking for new ways to build and strengthen community. A true entrepreneur, Nicola is embracing the challenges of selling party clothes in a pandemic and has branched out into online sales and new ways of doing business. My heartfelt thank you to all nominees. You're blazing the trail for future generations of women and providing outstanding examples of what young girls can aspire to as they grow up. I think spe I speak for all of us when I say that your hard work, perseverance, and strength contributes to building a better world. It is my pleasure to announce the 2021 Entrepreneurship Award winner. Congratulations to Maureen Haddock. Well, first I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and the YWCA for putting on this wonderful event. I think it's been going for 39 years. I would like to thank the selection committee, my nominators, and those who wrote letters on my behalf. This nomination inspired me to look back over 60 years of scrapbooks to find photos and souvenir programs of my past involvements with the YWCA. We have owned many businesses over the past 50 years, but it was during our years as franchisees of the Body Shop Saskatchewan that we worked with the YWCA most frequently. And each time there was a lasting impression left on our entire team of women. And when I say we, it's because I have partnered in life and business with my husband, Gord, for all those decades. What you probably don't know is that Anita Roddick, the founder of The Body Shop International, actually made my husband an official honorary woman. Highly complimented. He experienced roadblocks in the body shop because it was owned and operated by women. So he has lived some of the challenges and struggles that we as women have experienced in a man's world. I am pleased that the YWCA has recognized entrepreneurial women from the onset of the Saskatoon Women of Distinction Awards. Being an entrepreneur has enabled me to schedule my own life. It's let me solve my own problems or try to, and it's helped me make choices that worked for me and for my family. So getting to know children who are entrepreneurial in nature now and mentoring young entrepreneurs and sharing my business experience 
and our business experiences with young people has just added a whole wonderful dimension to our later years. So once again, I want to thank the YWCA sincerely for shining a light on entrepreneurship as a valuable option, a favorable way to live for women and indeed families and for honoring me with this wonderful award. I think it's very important to celebrate the successes of women because not only does it recognize the successes, but it also brings attention to the work that still has to be done. And it allows us to focus on the future and forward thinking. For me, this nomination has been an interesting moment to reflect on my work and all of the people who have helped me get to where I am. And it's been a chance to sort of honor all of the women who have helped me along the way. I, I wouldn't be in this career, I wouldn't be where I am in my career without the help of women along the way. So it's been a really nice opportunity to reflect on that. As an artist, I have found that the community supports that are available to me uh, have been invaluable in terms of the development of my career and myself as a person. I think it's important to celebrate the success of women, not only your own personal successes, but the personal successes of other women, because that's just what we do for each other. We build each other up. We're there for each other when things go wrong. We're there to celebrate and we're there to support. And for me personally, I wouldn't be where I am in my career or my personal life were it not for other women supporting me and celebrating me. Hello, my name is Carla Delgado and I'm the Director of Development and Engagement at the YWCA Saskatoon. I am here to present the Arts, Culture and Heritage Award nominees. Jackie Latondres. Jackie is a longtime Saskatoon resident who has worked to make modern dance an accessible art form for diverse audiences since she founded the Free Flow Dance Theatre Company in 1995. She is a graduate of the University of Waterloo with an honors degree in arts and business, majoring in dance and minoring in fine arts. Jackie presents dance in an unconventional venues in the tradition of postmodernist choreographers, and her work has been performed across Canada. Jackie is a passionate advocate for arts literacy and strives to deconstruct the belief that dance is solely for the cultural elite. She is known for visceral and emotionally driven works. Kate Matthews. Kate is a wardrobe stylist and brand consultant working with nonprofit organizations, businesses, entertainment productions, and public figures, including musicians, actors, models, politicians, and athletes. Kate has worked with local organizations such as Dress for Success, Sastel Saskatchewan Jazz Festival, Nutrien Children's Festival of Saskatchewan, Saskatoon Fashion and Design Festival, Remy Modern, and Sask Music. Her national placement and client list includes the Junior Awards, Canadian Country Music Association, Elle Magazine, Globe and Mail, National Post, City TV, CBC, CTV, Global TV, and the Food Network. Outside of work, Kate enjoys spending time with family, friends, and her three cats, Stella, Charlie, and Aria. And this year's Arts, Culture, and Heritage Award goes to Jackie Latondres. Congratulations, Jackie. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude and feel humbled by the strength and talents of the women I am surrounded by tonight. This is truly an honor, and I share this award with all of the women here who have made an incredible and indelible mark on this community. They are all the very definition of the word champion. I hope to be able to embody the collective efforts of women from around the world in my continual personal quest for social, economic, and political change for women. I personally aim to lift up and celebrate talented female artists every day through my work. I'll continue to seek out and engage with, listen to, and support women as they bring their own stories forward. Thank you to each and every one of you who have inspired me to do what I do and to be who I am. If I can't dance, I don't want to be part of your revolution. So I look forward to dancing across the universe with all of you.
It's so important to celebrate women because often the narrative is that we don't support each other and that we're competitive and that we're catty, but that's not true. We stand shoulder to shoulder. Just very um, humble to be nominated for such a prestigious award. I think it's so important to celebrate the amazing achievements that women do, and I'm just so honored that I've been recognized as part of this experience. It's critical to support one another um, elevate one another as fellow women to acknowledge and celebrate our success. It's um, really to, to help support each other in our passions, in our personal lives, our career development, um, our achievements in the broader community. Uh, I think it's just so important for women to feel the support of other women, as important as it is that we have um, males recognize um, the relevance, the importance, the critical nature of having women um, as a key element of their diversity inclusion at the workplace. I feel that, me personally, I have um, held dear uh, those moments in my life where I've really felt the support um, and, and the acknowledgement of other women helping to celebrate something that we've accomplished. Uh, so for me, it's it's critical. So thank you, YWCA, for creating these awards because it's uh, such a great platform to celebrate our important work that we're doing every day. I think traditionally, as women, we are quite hard on ourselves and have a hard time um, really celebrating the important things that we do. So I think this you know event is just such a amazing experience to celebrate the amazing things that women in our community do and I think will help re to really um, inspire other women. To be nominated as a woman of distinction means that I've been recognized by the women that I volunteer with, that I work alongside, and that means a great deal to me. Um, in terms of what I'll take away from this experience, uh, I think for me it's, it's just that sense of encouragement and uh, confirmation that what what I'm doing with my fellow volunteers and with my co-workers um, has meaning, has value, and is recognized and seems to be making a difference in other people's lives. So that's really important to me. In my life and work as a woman, I've had so many amazing um, fellow females just killing it. And I think that it's very important that we stop and look at our accomplishments with pride. I'm pleased to be here today representing Graham as the award sponsor of the Business and Professions Award. Graham, your construction solutions partner, is an employee-owned company with deep roots in Saskatchewan, dating all the way back to 1926 in Moose Jaw. And we are a proud sponsor for the 2021 YWCA Saskatoon Women of Distinction Awards. Our values of commitment, integrity, and reliability motivate us to participate in events such as this to support the local YWCA programs and services that improve the well-being of women, girls, and families. This inspiring event celebrates the incredible contributions of, of the women right here in our community. And this award in particular recognizes leaders in the professional and business service industry whose innovation has influenced positive change both in their careers and in the community. This year's nominees are Heather Pearson. Heather Pearson is the former editor-in-chief of the Star Phoenix and the Regina Leader Post. She was in the first woman to take the helm of the Star Phoenix newsroom since the paper was founded in 1902. After 27 years in journalism, she became the Director of Research Profile and Impact at the University of Saskatchewan. Pearson led the Star Phoenix to multiple national newspaper awards and Canadian Journalism Foundation honours. She earned a degree in communications at Spring Arbor University in Michigan and completed a Master's in Administration and Leadership at the University of Regina this spring. She serves on the boards of the Canadian Journalism Foundation and Reed Saskatoon. Deborah Schufelt, a senior geologist, co-president, and board member of the RESPC Canadian subsidiary, Deborah Schufelt draws on nearly two decades of career experience to foster the growth of a diverse team and inspire girls and young women to consider non-traditional STEM careers. Her leadership at work and through volunteer organizations exemplify her passion for creating equal opportunities and advancing the inclusion of underrepresented groups such as women and Indigenous peoples. 
Her passion for environment and sustainability drives the success of a new group in the Canadian office that focuses on water, environment, and alternative energy projects. Carrie Verishagan. Carrie is a registered dietitian and the director of the Eat Well Saskatchewan service that provides free nutrition advice to residents of Saskatchewan. She received her Bachelor of Science in Nutrition in 2008 from the University of Saskatchewan and during that time was a member of the Husky volleyball team. Carrie is a mother of two boys, loves to garden and cook. Whenever she is not busy with her family, she can be found on the golf course, enjoying the fresh air and competing in tournaments throughout Saskatchewan. The award for her business and profession goes to Deborah Schufelt. Hi everyone, thank you so much. It's a great honor to receive this award tonight. I'm just, I'm so pleased. Um, thank you so much to my fellow volunteers, uh, both in, in the workplace and in the community. Uh, I, I just feel so much gratitude for being acknowledged um, through the YWCA Women of Distinction. It's, it's really an honor. Um, thank you so much. It has been truly an honor to be nominated for the YWCA Women of Distinction Community Building Award. There have been so many wonderful women who have been role models that I have seen um, in this category and it just makes it that much more special to be considered amongst such a wonderful group of women. The nomination for the YWCA Women of Distinction Award was a big surprise for me. Um, and it's been a real joy to have the work in the community um, that's going on be recognized through all the nominees and my own in particular. Um, I think one of the things I'll take away from the nomination is just the recognition of the work of the other women that are nominated and what's happening in our community and how much it's important for us to express appreciation for what's going on around us in the community and how other people are engaging. Women make such a difference. They make a difference in their families, in their workplaces, they make a difference in schools, in the health system, in government. They make a difference in their communities that is almost immeasurable and that is felt every day. We have to celebrate women and the things that they do. I also think there's a bit of a connotation that women don't celebrate each other enough and I think that this event is a real myth buster. Women love celebrating each other, we love lifting each other up. It's a great joy to hear about the achievements other women have had and what they've been nominated for. So I think it's really important for women to support each other in the community. And I think women do support each other in the community and this event is a great way to recognize that. You know, it is so humbling and so such a beautiful thing to get the confidence, to see that you have the confidence of some of the other women in this community. Obviously, any of the women who were involved in my nomination could also be here and recipients of the award. I find that the women in the Saskatoon community are, they are supportive of each other. Uh, we find common ground in the work that we're doing together. And so to be recognized and honored by women that I have such respect for, it just means the world to me. The daycare at the YW was the first place I thought where my kids would go when they were young. I knew it would be safe, I could trust them, and it was a, a diverse group of kids and families, and I thought that would be a really good experience for them. My name is Cheryl De Villiers, and I'm the Director of Marketing and External Affairs at Saskatchewan Blue Cross. We at Saskatchewan Blue Cross are committed to supporting and building communities in which we live, in which we work, and also raise our families. Being an active part of the community is really just who we are. Through our corporate giving initiatives, employee volunteering, and our company matching programs, and so much more, we actually support over 200 community groups in Saskatchewan each and every year. It really is our pleasure to be sponsoring this award as it recognizes inspiring women who share the passion for the community that we do. The passion and leadership demonstrated by these women is creating strong and positive communities for future generations to come. And we're really proud to be recognizing their efforts. On behalf of everyone at Saskatchewan Blue Cross, 
I am pleased to announce the nominees for the Women of Distinction Community Building Award. The nominees in the Community Building category are Zeba Ahmed. Zeba is a proud mom of two grown children, a tireless volunteer in Sask Saskatoon provincially and nationally. She has served on and chaired several boards and event committees and recently was appointed to the Rideau Hall Foundation Board of Directors. Zeba will be serving as Honorary Colonel for the 38th Engineering Regiment in May 2021. Zeba began her career um, as a pharmacist and practiced for 20 years before moving on to other professional roles. Currently, she's the Executive Director of the Saskatoon Public Schools Foundation and she's passionate about contributing to many worthwhile community endeavors and brings energy and enthusiasm to everything she does. Deborah Posega Osborne. Deborah has served since 2016 as Vice President of University Relations at the University of Saskatchewan, where she provides vision, leadership, and direction to a team dedicated to building strong relationships for creating a culture of philanthropy and for telling the University of Saskatchewan story. Deborah earned her bachelor's degree in journalism from Michigan State University, where she also competed as a varsity athlete. She was a journalist for 13 years before returning to her alma mater to serve in several senior university relation roles, earning her master's degree and PhD during this time. In 2003, she became a partner and principal in a communications consulting firm, focusing on education and nonprofit sectors, and then in 2007, joined the university relations team at the University of Alberta, where she served almost a decade, including seven years as vice president before taking her University of Saskatchewan leadership role. Heather Sully. Heather is a chartered professional in human resources, holds a degree in HR and finance from the University of Saskatchewan, and a graduate certificate from Royal Roads University. Heather is currently leading at Affinity Credit Union as the Executive Vice President, Human Resources. Aligned to credit union values, community economic inclusion is a key passion for Heather. She currently contributes to this area of work through serving as board chair of the Saskatoon Friendship Inn and mentoring a young Cree woman through Big Brothers Big Sisters of Saskatoon. In the past, she served on many boards and partnerships aimed to build a vibrant and inclusive Saskatoon. And the recipient of the award is Zeba Ahmed. Thank you so much. Um, first, I would like to congratulate all the women uh, nominated here this evening. It's truly a remarkable group of women it's so exciting every year to come and see all the amazing things that women in Saskatoon and in Saskatchewan are doing and it inspires me to do um, as much as I can every day. So I feel so blessed and honored to be considered um, with these women. So congratulations to everyone and congratulations to the YWCA for continuing to do the work that they're doing in this very challenging year. I have to say a special thanks to Dorothy for um, putting forward my nomination. She is a dear, dear friend and um, we get up to a lot of mischief together through, um, through many of these community building activities. So I am very grateful to her for her friendship and her support and to those who um, also wrote supporting letters. Um, if I could just say, one thing, um, you know, the YWCA, it, I've been privileged to be a board member and to see the good work that they do, uh, I think so many of us in some ways maybe take it for granted. And you know, if I was thinking about this, the one thing about the YWCA is we don't necessarily consciously think about this, but we trust them. We trust them with our most vulnerable children and women who are in many times in difficult situations and I really commend them for the work that they do and the trust that they have built in this community. And as far as community building, there are some amazing things that have for me personally come from community building and that's the relationships and the friendships uh, that have been built and knowing that maybe in some small way we can each make a difference to make Saskatoon a better place and hopefully have impacted someone and made 
their day better. And that's what drives me and I encourage everyone to get involved in whatever way that is, small or big, there's room for everyone and it is can be so fulfilling in your life. So thank you so much for this uh, recognition and um, please enjoy the rest of the evening in your bubbles wherever you might be. I am in a group amongst some really amazing, inspiring women in this city, in this community. And to be one of those women is just an amazing experience, I think, for me. And to hopefully take this to be able to do some good in my community with it um, and, and get my name out there more so that people can find me when they need help as well to make this community stronger. Having the support system in my life is critical to my success, not only as a person, but as a wife, mother, friend, sister, entrepreneur, daughter. I am so grateful for these, and I always will be. So I believe that every time a woman succeeds in any way, they do need to be celebrated because that will help to give them the confidence and the strength to continue on and to succeed even more and to become the most amazing woman that they can. When we celebrate the success of women, we are celebrating the movement made in society in promoting and encouraging more women to break down the barriers that truly holds the entire world back from the possibilities. Being a single mother of an amazing little five-year-old, I definitely understand the need for support. Um, I started my, my business when my daughter was a year and a half and without um, daycare, working longer hours, my neighbors, you know, last minute picking her up because I can't get away from work, um, even through the beginning of COVID just to be able to keep my daughter with them to get groceries so that there were fewer of us out and about. Um, Support is something that women need much, much more of. I know a lot of single women wish that they could have more help when it comes to, to raising their children. And it always makes me feel extra grateful that I have people that I can rely on completely. Graham is also pleased to be the award sponsor for the Leadership in the Trades Award. Graham is a strong ally of women within the construction industry, and we are proud to support this award that recognizes leader in the skilled trade industry or services sector who are role models both in their careers and the community. Their achievements have broken down barriers and inspired positive change. This year's nominees are Andrea Crittenden. Andrea chose to enter the trades directly out of high school and achieve status as a journey person electrician. As a woman in the trades, her skills and abilities were disregarded, but that only fueled her desire to succeed in a non-traditional role even stronger. As part of the YWCA Trade Journey Program, she has inspired other women to follow their dreams to become a tradesperson. She is a successful entrepreneur, co-owning 16 Safety Services Inc. with her husband. She offers passionate training and OHS consulting to many industries, including electrical, continuing to show leadership in the trades. Anne-Marie Howie. Over her 14-year journey as an electrician and small business owner in Saskatoon, Anne-Marie has always wanted to help pave the way for women entering the trades. She mentors a new generation of apprentices, some through the YWCA Trade Journey Program, at her business, Essential Power Inc., and is the electrical instructor for Saskatchewan Polytechnique's Women in Trades and Technology Program. Anne-Marie created the Strength for Moms Christmas Toy and Clothing Drive several years ago to support other single mothers and currently serves on the board of directors for both the Saskatoon French School and the Saskatoon chapter of Executive Women International. The recipient of this year's Leadership in the Trades Award is Andrea Crittenden. I cannot begin to thank the YWCA Women of Distinction Selection Committee enough for their selection in choosing me for this amazing opportunity. 
I am so thankful for my family, friends, colleagues, mentors, and my team that have supported me through the thick and the thin. They have celebrated the achievements with me and guided me along every step of my path. I could not have done this without all of you. I will not take this award lightly, and I will continue to forge the path that I journey on each day for all women and for the future women of distinction. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I think, you know, it's so important to celebrate the success of women because it acknowledges all of the work that women do in our society and in our community. And when I look at the women who are nominated for the Women of Distinction Award, again, the, it, it's such a diverse group and it's such a diverse expertise in these groups and such a diverse way of doing things. And I think that this um, Women of Distinction Award really honors that and honors every woman's way of doing what they need to do. It, it's such a, a, a great array of women that have have been nominated and won in the past. So it's it's a great honor to be part of that group. I've been very honored and humbled to be nominated for the YWCA's Women of Distinction Award. I feel that I would take away a lot from being even nominated for this award because it helps me to realize the work that I'm doing is valued and that I should continue doing it with enthusiasm and passion. I think women um, in general, we do so much, we carry the burden of our society, but many of us, or most of us, are, are, are unrecognized and uncongratulated. And I think it is really important that we celebrate our successes as a group and as uh, women in general, but all women, like you don't have to be leaders in your, your industries or your, your fields, but I think every woman should be celebrated for the accomplishments and her daily life. I think that hardship is something that everyone experiences in different ways. And I know that I feel just being able to reach out to others in small ways helps them to feel better and make some improvements. In my own life, I've had hardship in times, especially when I was trying to go to university and work full time and be a mother to five. And it, it's definitely very hard. When I worked at the Canadian Deaf Blind Rebellion Association with students who are both deaf and blind, I worked the night shift so that I didn't have to have someone else raising my child while I was at work. And I know when I was trying to sleep during the day and still nurse my baby and all those other difficult challenges that I had, I really appreciated the people that would do something kind for me, whether it was send me a card or bring me a meal. And so I've tried to reciprocate that in my world now, where I do more for others based on the experiences I've had. And I really want to help ease the hardship, especially for the newcomers to our city. They're not sure what Canadian culture is. So I try to help them to know this is acceptable and this is kind of like hidden. No one tells you what that idiom means, but everyone uses it. So then I try to help them in that way. Wow, the, being nominated for a Women of Distinction Award was just an honor and a surprise. Um, I've been attending the ceremony for many, many years and always enjoy attending the ceremony and seeing the diversity of women and the diversity of experience and the diversity of expertise within the city of Saskatoon. And I, I, I am just honored beyond belief. And I think, you know, my nomination is more about the work that I coordinate and all the people that are involved in the work that I'm involved with. Good evening, everyone. It's time for the education category. This is an award that Cameco has sponsored for many years because we believe in the value and the hard work that comes with the Saskatoon YWCA and all the programs that they contribute to our community. We also believe in recognizing and thanking the women every single year who come through this awards program. They make Saskatoon such a better place to live and to work. This is actually my 10th year of handing out this award, and I can tell you, it never gets old. Let's get to this year's award nominees. There are three of them. The first one is Pamela Goulden McLeod. She has spent 25 years in our city making Saskatoon a better place to be. She started with the Saskatoon public school system as a social worker, then a counselor, then a consultant. After that, she moved on to the city of Saskatoon, where right now she's the director of the Emergency Management Response Department. 
We all know what we've been living through the last 14 months or so, and she has played a critical role as a director and leader in how the city has responded through that emergency management response department. Thank you so much for everything you have done this year and for the last 25 years. Our next nominee is Tammy Krukel. I met her along with all the other nominees last month, and I can tell you Tammy impressed me from the moment we had our first conversation through Zoom. She has such a diverse background and so many different skills. Her resume starts with a Bachelor of Science in Home Economics from the University of Alberta. She also has a Bachelor's Degree in Education from the U of S. Currently, she's the Program Manager and Projects Manager at SkyUp, and in her spare time, she's also the Sewing Circle Coordinator at the Saskatoon Mother Centre. Thank you, Tammy. It's great to see your name on this nomination list this year. Our final nominee or candidate is Charlene Newmeyer. Maybe the best way to describe her is she's an educator with a tremendous heart. She has volunteered for the last 25 years at the Friendship Inn here in Saskatoon. On top of that, she teaches English as an additional language to the kids at Ecole St. Gerard. And on the weekends, on Saturdays, she does the exact same thing at the Saskatoon Global Gathering Place. On top of all of that, her husband James and her over the years have hosted in their own home 28 international students. So those are this year's nominees for the education category. And now it's my job to unveil the winner. Here we go. The winner of the 2021 Women of Distinction Award in the education category is Pamela Goulden McLeod. Congratulations. What a wonderful accomplishment. And this is the award that you get. A very well-deserved one at that. Um, well, thank you very much. I am so honored and so surprised to receive this award. Um, I have had the opportunity to stand on the, you know, have so many women support me and I've learned from so many women in my career. And I think the best way I can honor those women is by taking that forward and by making sure that every woman I have the opportunity to work with or interact with, that I'm supporting them in the same way that I've been supported. So thank you to my husband and my children who you know, have adjusted to my life and have adjusted to um, me needing to be involved with things at the last minute's notice. And thank you very much to the, the Saskatoon Public School Division, the Saskatoon Fire Department and the City of Saskatoon who have given me the opportunity to work and explore and learn and grow with them. Well, I have been extremely honoured and privileged to be nominated and acknowledged uh, by my nominator, Jocelyn Orr, manager of Student Wellness Centre, but also by the YWCA. The values that the YWCA holds dear, including respect and diversity, communication, teamwork, are very much the values that I try and practice and live by, as do the teams that I work on. It's really remarkable. Um, women for eons have been essentially the CEO of families and over time we're watching women uh, become empowered and emerge as community leaders, as corporate leaders and I think it's really an incredible um, sort of fundamental shift in the way that society views the role of women uh, in leadership and decision making roles uh, and pausing particularly through uh, mechanisms like this um, award system is is really a critical piece to ensure that women feel like they do have a place because they do have a place in decision making uh, and in leadership and so um, this is a fundamental way to uh, to ensure that we take the time to recognize that. I feel like women are um, very much knowledge keepers and nurturers in our community and uh, I've had the privilege and honor of working with women who've endured great hardship and yet they continue to contribute to their families and their broader communities in a, a way of nurturing others and teaching others and supporting others to be their best and so um, 
we all need to do our part uh, to to support women to really fulfill this role. Being nominated for this award is a, a true honor. Um, I spent a lot of time working with a lot of the folks who um, were my mentors who nominated me for this award and um, they have paved the way to make this work happen and without their mentorship and their supports that I wouldn't be sitting here. Um, and we rarely take time to stop and reflect on and celebrate on successes. And so um, sitting here being nominated for this award is really for me about um, pausing to reflect on the successes today. Well, for hundreds of years, women have fought for equity and opportunity and we continue to do so and there's more work to be done and I believe in the power of the voice of women and I applaud women who use their voice, who speak up, who work towards inclusion um, and an acceptance of diversity and who fight against violence and stigma and racism and se sexism. I believe in the power of change and I believe in the work towards systemic change and with global solidarity, I hope that it moves towards a culture of inclusion, of acceptance of diversity, of respect and integrity for all, of, of health and wellness for all, and of growth and change over the course of our lifetimes. I do education in the community to our youth and young adults on brain and mental illness and I believe in the power of these generations to use their voices and create change and I do feel that knowledge and education are power and should be accessible to all and am in support of the work that both the YWCA does and all of the teams and all of our educators and our communities at large. Well, it's a great honor to be nominated. I was um, surprised to receive this nomination um, and it encouraged me to take some time to reflect on, um, you know, what, how other people perceive my work and even my own commitment to it because I felt very undeserving. Um, I think we all can be grateful for any experiences that humble us and really try to um, keep that feeling as we continue our work into the future. So I'm thankful for that effect of, of this nomination. Hello. On behalf of the Kinsman Club of Saskatoon, we are once again honored to be part of this long running and important tradition within our great city of Saskatoon. And thank you to the YWCA for not allowing anything to get in the way of honoring these amazing women for the critical efforts they put in to serving their community. Honoring the efforts of people doing work for their community is exactly in line with our goal of serving the community's greatest need. And we as kinsmen often get questioned what that really means. Well, for us, it means a variety of initiatives. Anything that makes Saskatoon a better place to live. It means helping kids attend summer reading camps. It means funding renovations to transitional housing and shelters so that those utilizing the services can retain their sense of dignity for themselves and their family while going through one of the toughest times in their life. It means supporting groups like the Prairie Harm Reduction and the OPC. It also means funding parks, rinks, museums, and a host of other infrastructure for kids to play, learn, and grow into the amazing adults like those we are honoring here today. I personally hope these awards continue for another 39 years so that my best friend, partner, and mother to our amazing daughters will be able to continue sharing these nominees as, and winners as role models for them. So thanks again for including us, and I'll shorten the talk of our annual fundraiser, the Kinsman Home Lottery, tickets available now, and share this year's nominees. So the nominees for the Health and Athletic Award, Chris, Colleen Christofferson Cote. Colleen leads critical community based work to improve the lives of vulnerable people in Saskatoon. She brings extensive knowledge of the complexity of human services systems and the intricacies of how policy practice indirectly and directly impact the community, particularly those that are, who are most vulnerable, marginalized, and oppressed. 
Colleen has lent leadership to numerous intersectional initiatives, including the Saskatoon Poverty Reduction Partnership, Saskatoon Housing Initiatives Partnership, the Saskatoon Interagency Response to COVID-19, and the Safe Community Action Alliance. She's celebrated for her ability to find clarity in chaos, to pull diverse perspectives into a unified vision, and to carve collective paths forward. Jeannie Ko. Jeannie is a nurse practitioner who is raised and currently resides on Treaty 6 territory. Jeannie completed nursing school in 1997 and began her career on the Baffin Island. In 2001, Jeannie returned to Saskatchewan and in 2009 became a nurse practitioner. Not only is Jeannie a proud nurse, but she's also a proud mother to three beautiful children, a partner to her husband, Matt, and an integral member of the community she resides in. Dr. Alana Holt. Dr. Holt is passionate about mental health, awareness and wellness strategies, and promotes health and wellness in several forums. She maintains a busy clinical practice at both the University of Saskatchewan's Student Wellness Center and the Saskatchewan Medical Association's Physician Health Program. She is a member of the Provincial Pandemic Leadership Team focusing on healthcare worker wellness. Dr. Holt volunteers her time making presentations about mental health, youth and young adult brain development, mental strength, resiliency and suicide prevention to post-secondary students, high school students and sports teams. Dr. Holt is married with four children ages 11 to 19 and her spare time enjoys running and doing yoga. So, and the winner is... Colleen Christopher Christopherson Cote, congratulations. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the nominating team. Um, it's quite a, a remarkable and humbling experience to go through this. Uh, and many of the people who were uh, fundamental in making this nomination happen are my mentors, are the people who uh, originally paved these pathways to allow us to do this kind of work together. Uh, and without them, this work would not be possible. Um, looking forward, I think I looked at the list of folks who were nominated and just to be recognized uh, in this long list of amazing female leaders in Saskatoon is, is a remarkable thing in itself. And so uh, with that, I'd just like to say thank you to the community and to all the partners who make this work possible. Uh, and so here's to the next handful of steps forward. Thank you. It's been a very humbling experience to see my name alongside so many wonderful, strong women in our community um, who have who have been the recipients of, uh, of the Women of Distinction Awards and I'm, I am feel very privileged and honored to be part of that uh, that, that roster of women uh, and but recognizing that there are so many more strong women women of distinction out there who have not yet been uh, honored in the way that I feel I have I, uh, I believe I'm going to take from this an experience. This has never happened to me before. I, I'm just kind of a mom doing mom stuff, uh, working at the gym, working at the drugstore, just doing what I can, it, being kind to people. And um, I just hope this is sort of an enhancement to that. Beyond measure that women are an important part of this world that we speak loudly and clearly and we are empowering others including the youth to grow and be as strong and powerful as they can be to make sure that this continues on for years to come. Women have been coming in in all kinds of fields and I especially see it in the gym um, where there's power lifters that are lifting 600 pounds deadlifts um, and it's great to see them out there celebrating being able to be on the same level of men let's say um, I don't always like to say that because I believe each of us are individuals and we should be celebrating ourselves not just because we're a woman but because we're 
a person. The nomination means to me that I have done something right, um, that something in the community is growing, that my family is a part of it. I'm proud of my nominator because it was my brother and it was just so personal and touching that he thought that this would be important to me. I think it's incredibly important, incredibly important to celebrate the successes of women because the reality is that too often women go through their lives thinking that they are not worthy. And indeed they are not only worthy, but they are strong and they are, are able to accomplish great things if they are just given an opportunity and given the um, incentive. At William Joseph, we are so proud to have created and sponsored this award in the name of Loretta Andronowicz, one of our CEO Ryan Townen's best friends. Loretta had the heart of gold. She lived a simple life, however, she made it a purpose to make a huge difference in the lives of everyone she touched. She made a difference in her son's life as she raised him to be the wonderful person he is today. Loretta never loved being the center of attention as she was more concerned with making sure everyone else felt special. This award is for all those people out there that make a difference that go unnoticed. It's for those that have the ability and the courage to overcome adversary, adversity and make a difference in our community. Loretta, you will always be missed and never forgotten and the difference you made in our lives lives on through this award. This year's first award nominee is Tannis Nicholson. Tannis and her husband Graham Nicholson have two children, Austin and Chelsea. Tannis has been employed with the Royal Bank since 2001 and graduated from the University of Saskatchewan with her business certificate, business administration certificate in 2006. She has also been an entrepreneur since 2010 with her home-based business, Snuggle Bug Diaper Cakes. Tannis is a qualified Highland dance instructor. Tannis has an extensive volunteer background spanning many different organizations, including Saskatoon Folk Fest, Pride, Empty Arms Perinatal Loss Support Services, C95 Radio Marathon, Saskatoon Food Bank, Blue Water Initiative, We Day, and the Boys and Girls Club of Saskatoon, to name a few. The second nominee is Patty Tate. Patty is the Interim Executive Director and Cultural Coordinator at the Elizabeth Fry Society of Saskatchewan. With special focus on individual counseling to marginalized women, Patty is an Aboriginal woman with over 30 years of experience in the field of help and expert assistance. She has worked extensively within federal and provincial prisons, counseling and supporting Indigenous men and women. She is also a Native Liaison at the Prison for Women. Patty has often been called upon as an expert on the issues faced by First Nations, Métis, Inuit and unregistered Indigenous offenders. Patty serves as a board member for the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network, the Métis Addiction Saskatchewan, the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies, and the Aboriginal Regional Advocate for Prayer Region. As a Kolkham and Chapham, Patty is passionate about the need for Indigenous communities to heal for the sake of our future generations. Our third nominee is Shauna Wicks. Shauna Wicks graduated from Marion Graham in 1988 and got married in 1991. She has two wonderful children and has worked various jobs, including three years at a local law firm. After having kids, Shauna decided to leave her workplace and instead run a daycare out of her home, helping single moms by offering more affordable rates. This allowed Shauna to volunteer with her children's schools, work on bingos and fundraisers for various teams and groups. After spending several years volunteering with her children's various activities, Shauna went back to work at a local pharmacy, eventually working her way up to management. About five years ago, Shauna embarked on a healthy lifestyle change and now works at Rise Strength Labs in addition to Nordon Drugs. This year's award winner for the Loretta's Award is Patty Tate. It is very humbling to have been considered for this award and to have been the successful nominee is even more moving. The recipients who have come before me are such amazing women who have made our city, our community and our lives better than they ever were. I find it hard to compare 
to their achievements. I gave a lot of thought to my nomination and I believe the reason I am so touched is because I have had amazing support throughout my career from true women of distinction who are all standing here with me today. Some pres present in my dreams who come to me as spirits while others are here in my memories. These wonderful uncelebrated women lit the fire in my heart that has inflamed the strength that I believe urges me forward, knowing that I'm not alone in my belief that we are all deserving of lives where we can experience joy. Each of you who has been nominated have touched others and our women and our women of distinction. We are celebrating the strength that, that you all bring to the issues you advocate for and feel passionate about. My heart and my work is with men and women who are infected and affected by HIV and AIDS, and also those women and girls who are trapped within the justice system, the just us system, that's not you and me and the circumstances that directed each of their journeys. I am amazed daily by the strength and wisdom they display despite the pain that they have to endure. From personal experience, I know that there can be a light at the end of that tunnel, that dark tunnel. Lives that do know peace, love, and yes, joy. This is the knowledge that feeds my steps. I cannot thank the YWCA enough for the recognition that they have bestowed upon me with the Loretta Andronowicz Award. I recognize each of the nominees here tonight for their work and accept this award on behalf of them and all the strong women who have influenced their journeys, their strength and their passion on whatever highway they have traveled. It is important for me to further acknowledge the Indigenous traditions and faith that has been so influential in my personal growth. Knowing the Creator is guiding me on this path has lifted me up during times when I was very weak. I also acknowledge my family and their unconditional love, without whom I would truly, truly be struggling. Congratulations to everyone who has been nominated today. And again, miigwech and thank you. Bye bye. Good evening. I would like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Metis people. Next Gen Energy is pleased to sponsor the Lifetime Achievement Award, an award recognizing a woman who has inspired many, many, broke new ground, and contributed to the life of our province in her professional or volunteer leadership. We are excited to be a part of the Women of Distinction Awards and the YWCA. Next Gen Energy's operations and corporate principles align with the definition of this organization and are supportive of all the good work the YWCA does for women and children in Saskatoon and Saskatchewan. NextGen's corporate mandate is simple, to create as much positivity for as many people as possible. As an organization, we have been actively investing in Saskatchewan since 2013 when the company was formed through programs that enabled the next generation to reach their potential. As an organization, we are committed to building strong relationships with local Saskatchewan communities and stakeholders. We believe NextGen has an opportunity to create a positive and lasting impact for the people of Saskatchewan. NextGen is proud to be a member of this province and is committed to building strong relationships with local Saskatchewan communities and stakeholders.
On behalf of NextGen Energy, it is my honor to introduce and congratulate the Saskatchewan Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Irene Dubé. Irene Dubé was born in Wynyard, Saskatchewan in 1936 to a family of 10 children. It was from her humble beginnings that Irene says she learned the importance of community, the appreci appreciation of life's simple pleasures, and the true meaning of perseverance. These early life lessons allowed Irene to make her mark as an accomplished businesswoman, entrepreneur, and activist in the Saskatoon community. Irene and her husband Leslie founded the Concord Group of Companies in 1954. Throughout the years, Irene provided general management and accounting services to the Dubay's many businesses. Through their hard work, sound business practices, and social consciousness, Irene and Les have been able to watch their small office of three become a successful business venture with extensive holdings. Since freezing their estate in 1993, Irene and her husband have been committed to improving the quality of life for Saskatchewan residents. Together, the pair has donated over $35 million to endless local and worldwide charities. In addition to their financial contributions, Irene has also dedicated her life to community service. Part of this generosity involved taking in young pregnant women and providing them with a warm, loving home until their babies were born. Additionally, Irene served as a member of the University of Saskatchewan Board of Governors from 1987 to 1989. Irene was also a driving force behind the planning and creation of the Irene and Leslie Dubay Center for Mental Health, one of her many passions. In 2007, the University of Saskatchewan recognized Irene with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree for her extensive work to improve the community, the field of education, and the medical profession. Irene and Les have also received several recognitions as a duo, including most notably the Saskatchewan Order of Merit Award in 2008, the International Award for Philanthropy in 2013, and being presented into the Order of Canada in 2016. Irene hopes to continue her philanthropic efforts in Saskatchewan with a focus on ending the stigma surrounding mental health. Even after all her success, Irene maintains that her biggest reward and greatest success is seeing her three children, three grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren continue the Dubay legacy of selflessness and unmatched generosity. Congratulations to Irene. We as a community are grateful for your hard work, inspiration, and your determination. Good evening. Thank you, YWCA. Thank you to all the sponsors, and congratulations to all the nominees. It is truly an honor to receive such a prestigious award, as it is. it includes so many of our goals and shows what can be done with our community and make it a better place. We are now in the midst of a horrible pandemic and working together is a must, not an option. The YWCA was used as a hospice during the flu epidemic that <clears throat> ended the, in 1919. This was but one of the many charities and services that the YWCA provides for the people of Saskatoon and beyond. We have been asked why do we do what we do. The joy and peace we feel knowing that someone will benefit from our efforts for a long time to come. Whether it's a clean glass of water in Malawi, a school in Nicaragua, a dental visit in Bolivia, or a hospital bed in Saskatoon, sharing 
is love. God put each one of us on this earth for a reason. Leslie and I believe we have found ours in helping others and sharing what God has given us. We are his true servants. Thank you. God bless you and keep you safe.